Boys, 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 what's happening? Uh, this is going to be a video about Yori, uh, the third unit in the Tales of collab in Fall 2022. Um, he is a pretty hype unit, especially from what I've seen from the community. And uh, for this video, I figured I'd go over all the stuff that I normally put in the printed summary that I make for most units that come out. Um, I'm still going to be making that, of course, and that's going to be linked in the description if you want to go check that out. It's going to be on the tier list, you know, on Facebook, Reddit, Discord. But for now, I think I'd make a video and explain uh, exactly what my thoughts are about the unit and just before they get released. So maybe you start planning and get an idea of what you want to do with the unit if you want to pull or not. So why don't we get into it? So for his traits, um, these are kind of cool. Limit, limit Quartet. Using a skill, fill OL Gauge and give unit the OL Gauge buff based on amount of filled OL Gauge, max level 4. So this is similar to Luke's. OL gauge buff, where as he attacks and gains the OL gauge or the over limit gauge, um, Yuri himself actually has to level that up in order to get advanced effects. As we can see, level one doesn't really give anything; it just gives basically the um, super armor, as 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 Luke does. But at level two, level three, and level four, it does gives does give bonus effects with physical attack, damage boost, damage cap, as well as level three gives buff duration, and level four gives more cap, more damage. 10 seconds buff duration, as well as fully restores all your skills SCT. So if you do have the ability to level this up, and now it does, I, I assume this is going to take quite a bit to get to level 4, um, building it up before you use it. But when you do get there, you get 30% attack damage, 12,000 12, damage cap, damage taken minus 30%, which is nuts, 10 seconds more buff duration, as well as fully restoring, restoring all your SCT. So once you activate it, it's like god mode. Um, he's going to go absolutely ham with his damage uh, and, you know, getting all those skill stocks innately. That's nuts. And of course, as Luke works the OL buff active, the OL gauge will not fill. So you can actually reactivate and, you know, get ready for the next OL gauge while you have it up. If you have it up, the next one will not fill. Um, as for trait two, do justice. Obviously standard earth damage and damage cap. This is again, all earth damage. So it's going to affect his physical attacks and special. As well as, you know, of course, arc skills and magic if you feel like using that for him. Um, while Yuna is alive, all other allies' physical damage taken minus 10%. This is dope because it's basically an innate passive damage reduction, damage mitigation for everyone. Um, minus 10%. And then when an ally is incapacitated, very greatly restore unit HP, give strength, defense, intelligence, mind, and plus 50% buff. Restore one SCT stock for one skill. This is, again, uh, this is <laughs> well, it's basically like a passive awaken on him. Uh, with plus 50% stats and all of his stats when another unit dies. Um, it's basically, it's kind of like a baton to the future type deal where <laughs> he gains a massive amount of buffs um, and one SCT skill stock for one skill. So a random skill stock, of course, but pretty nice. I like that a lot. Um, Yori level abilities now. Let's get into his like skills, his... his his usable abilities, his skill one, Azor Edge, Frontal Long Range Earth Combo Attack. Now, as you guys can see, this is damn quick. Um, I don't know if it's long non-line of sight yet, but it sure as heck looks like it. Um, I feel like this can be spammed out incredibly fast. I don't know really how much damage it's going to do, but if you are... <laughs> I can only imagine if you are having the OL buff level 4 on there. Um, this is going to pump out some serious damage real, real quick, so... I don't think it's sustainable damage. It's probably no more than five stocks base, and you can only really boost that to like eight or eight or so. But I mean, it's going to be a lot of quick damage. Skill two, Tiger Blade, Medium Area Earth Combo Attack that launches enemies into the air. This is your skill in his kit. I think it's the only one that actually raises enemies off the ground. So this is going to be your like sky high booster. Um, it's not crazy fast, but it's not it's not slow either. Um, it, him like hitting an enemy, launching them up into the air, and smashing down on the ground. I don't hate it. Um, I think this will probably be a pretty good DPS skill, but only time will tell. We'll have to see. As for the skill 3, Dragon Swarm. Instantly close the gap for a wide area Earth combo attack. I love gap closers, and I think one my one gripe of Stan, at least with this collab, was that he didn't have a gap closer. Of course, he's a fantastic unit regardless. I just do wish he had a little bit, move, little bit of movement in his kit. Um, but I'm a big fan of gap closers, and yes, it might be a little bit longer of an animation, but, again, I think he's, like other units we've seen in the past, like Virgil, like Nero, like 
other very situational niche units who need a very specific setup in order to boost their damage the highest. I think during a level 4 OL buff, his skills are going to hit so damn hard. So I'm excited to see what we can eke out of him uh, as his potential. And then getting into his special Heavenly Blade Wing, very powerful earth attack to all enemies, which is hilarious because it's literally one hit. Um, damage cap plus 150,000. Now when I say it's one hit, um, it's kind of funny. You're like, wait, only like 160,000 cap? No, 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 no. We're going to get there because as you can see, I've written here, Burst Art is passive. Just prefacing this, his passive in his kit gives 11 times his special cap. So that 159,999 is going to get times 11 when he actually has the OL buff active. And we'll get into that in a second, but that's... It's not 160k on his, on his special. It is 11 times, like, 1760. 1,760,000. So why don't we jump into his skills, his skill tree. Um, this is interesting because Overlimit is, again, the same name as Luke's Overlimit, the buff. Of course, this is a zero MP skill that you that he would have in his skill tree as a castable magic that will enable his OL buff. Um, of course, this is based on what effects it gives is based on the OL gauge buff that has been churned up to levels one, two, three, four, and so on. There will be a no a very notable buff active that you can see on Yori's profile in game that you'll be able to tell between one through four. And of course, the OL gauge gets lost whenever you actually do activate the OL buff, like it gets depleted. So you'll have to build it up again after the OL, OL buff runs out, the current one. And this is where we get into Burst Artis. OL buff active, special damage plus 100%, damage kept plus 100, 1000%, I guess you're saying, 1000%. Basically, this doubles your special damage itself, and then the damage cap is boosted by plus 1000 or 11 times. Um... Yeah, so anything you put onto his base damage cap will be get multiplied by 11. And as we'll see in the damage cap, that can reach almost 2 million damage for one hit on his special. Um, which gets kind of crazy when you start thinking about, in my opinion, things that will boost that special even more, such as a crit on that, maybe? Um, I don't know if he has any pays that's going to be an enabling crit on his special at all but a, a heaven's bow star lord on that will get a nice 25 percent damage cap boost on that you know i mean a little saucy there i don't know if it's gonna work or not but really really cool that he has a one hit special and then it's going to be a two million hit um at max and then fatal strike instant physical attacks to insta kill i don't know what the chance on this is but i think it might be kind of interesting um in arena in or in or against bosses and other no insta kill enemies physical attack damage plus 20 percent when physical attacking get damage minus 10 percent so he basically acts like he's piercing, uh, or I guess he, he essentially pierces enemies' defenses when they cannot be insta-killed, and as well gains a 20% physical attack boost when they cannot be insta-killed. So, of course, insta-kill does not work in arena, insta-kill does not work on bosses and boss waves. Um, so, it, is this that usable? It's essentially for the harder content in the game, it's going to be a standard plus 20% physical attack damage, and then 10% piercing. Not bad at all. Assassin, physical attack damage plus 30%, damage cap plus 2,000 against human types of course he already does have as you might see below his human buster as well as kit and special boost so the fact he's getting human buster special boost and a boosted special or physical attack damage to human types as well as damage cap boost uh you love to see it it's basically like you know an extra little baby human human slayer um which i love that Overextension boost a well buff duration 20 percent well buff a well buff active physical attack damage cap plus 2000 so this is where we're going to get a little bit more cap for his uh dual wielding and of course this needs he does need a bit of cap uh, he does not have much innate outside of his ol buff being active so like i said he's a little bit niche and this helps it um last longer right so his 10 20 second buff lengths that are normally so it's normally 10 seconds then he gets 10 seconds more from level three or four ol gauge and then it multiplies it or you know adds 20 percent to that so that's going to be 12 or 20 percent I do do think this is additively stacking with other boosts, such as, you know, the Mirror Arc Palm Rim accessory, you have the Velda Org Arc, you have the uh, SR Eternal Clock Arc. Um, things like that, I think, do, will boost it more and stack additively. Um, and it would be really cool because we've seen with things like Nero and Virgil where we have a very easy ability to boost the lengths of their, lengths of their buff durations. 
Um, maybe turning a level four buff into 30 seconds, 36 seconds. Who knows? Um, that's a really long buff. And then we get to the cream of the crop, Etherburst. Use all MP to greatly restore the unit's HP and fully restore the unit's SCT. This is something, yes, it, it is locked to him, unfortunately. You cannot teach it to other units. But it is essentially like its own Honey Elixir or when he's Apple Pie. I don't know if it's Time Stop yet. So if it's Time Stop, it's closer to Honey Elixir. If it's not, closer to when he's Apple Pie. But we've seen other units with this before, right? We've seen the Alice's. The um, OG Alice has full Ether Restore as well as the um, Swimsuit Alice. And they have the ability, and just that alone allows for a, a totally different type of gameplay where, you know, may, maybe a lot of people that who've joined recently don't really have a lot of SCT gain in their kit. You can't really play this way of where, you know, hitting Goddess Kiss and smacking an enemy, gaining some MP back, filling up all their skills, and then just spamming the shit out of them. Most people can't do that. Um, only generally older veteran players who have Honey Lips or have Warner's Apple Pie have Swimsuit Alice who can do that type of thing yeah that's pretty big um it, it's a very unique thing and they do not keep this i mean i should say they do not allow this on many units very often so this will keep him around for quite a bit um and i think having ether burst in this kit innately is damn cool then we get to into his other other skills fighting spirit five heroism up two critical up two advancing vitals proud force per, oh, those are all relatively standard and we get the Human Buster, which is obviously physical attacks, counters, and specials getting um, anti-type of damage advantage. Special boost, boosting that another 50%. Illusion, Auto Brave, Auto Haste, Auto Speed. Love those autos. Gale Force, another 10% SAT gain at full health, plus its speed. Decoy her free, love to see that. Sleeping Lion, I think that's, we have not seen that since Shift to Lanceville. Um, and I believe it's a pretty big attack boost. Um, it's It stacks with the things like Awaken. So... Definitely a nice little uh, low health um, regen boost. No wield innate. Love to see it. Um, he does have low, relatively low single wield hit counts, and nothing really suggested that he would be single wield only, so I'm glad to see he has an innate. Sword high boost. Sword mega boost. Earth high drive. Earth attack race 2. Earth attack race 3. That's a lot of boost for his, not only his physical attacks, well, mostly his physical attacks, but also the drives and the raises affecting his special damage, uh, just making that easier to cap. Earth critical raise, which is and damage for um, earth attacks ultimate boost giant killing tune more cap against bosses for physicals and specials and then quick trigger control. so he doesn't look like he needs much right but i think the main thing in his kit that i think and i think a lot of veterans would agree with me is that he's gonna need goddess kiss to regen mp on regular attacks to get that mp back to consistently use ether burst um goddess kiss is the absolute main thing he's missing from his kit there, of course, are going to be other things and builds that you're going to need to add. But Goddess Kiss, without a doubt, he is going to want. Um, all right, boys, let's talk about damage caps. So since he is a dual wielder, um, obviously, with phys his physical caps, um, and you've seen some in his kit already, but let's just tally him up. So we will have the 9,999 base, as well as 14,000 from trait 2, just that flat-out, unconditional um, 14,000 damage cap to his physicals, yes, but also all, all Earth damage. And then his sword mega boost and earth attack race two will or earth attack race three will give him 2k each so that's an unconditional 18k on top of his base which comes out to 27,999 base dual wield hits um and then you're looking at conditionals so his straight one during the oil buff only this is his over limit buff active after charging the uh over limit gauge buff um at level two it starts giving 4,000 then 8,000 at level 3, and then 12,000 at level 4. So it can be a little bit variable in between there. And, you know, adding that in to the conditional values, that'll give it a little range. Um, Assassin, this is against humans only. So maybe not applicable to a content. 2,000 damage cap during a well buff. Or, I don't think it's done during a well buff. But regardless, against humans only. 2,000 conditional damage cap during overextension. This is during the OL buff. Um, this is again the, the passive that does give a boost to the duration of OL buffs, but again, conditional, it needs to be during the OL buff. Um, and then 2004 Giant Killing 2 bosses, this is innate in his kit, and he gets 2000 cap during on physical attacks 2 bosses. So, overall in all, 27,999 unconditional, essentially unconditional, 
Um, and then your 37,999 to 45,999. Now, you will be able to boost this. I assume most people will be, will be able to boost this with arcs, with other skills, with other passive units. So that 45,000, that 37,000 is looking pretty spicy. And, you know, even that 27,000 is looking pretty dang spicy for um, damage potential for a dual loading unit. Um, yeah, pretty solid damage caps. Um, very comparable to Luke. So if you've been looking at him and seeing what he has to offer, um, I think they're both very similar in their damage output at the moment. Um, and then we go to a special. Uh, and, of course, like we talked about before, one hit with the... 9,999 base. Then we add the 150,000 innate boost that it's given to itself, as well as 14,000 from trade 2, 2,000 from Earth Attack Race 3, and then maybe against the boss, 2,000 uh, Giant Killing Doom. And then you multiply it all by 11 if it's used during the Over Limit buff. Um, and that comes out to a staggering 1,957,989 innate innate damage without any other boosts um and now this is obviously fully conditional as well with giant killing 2 and first art is but it gives you an idea of just how much damage you can do um i don't think you can boost this too much past it i mean that base boost of 150,000 is going to give most chunk of the damage that's going to get multiplied but you can add things like arcs like passives like other units that are going to boost it up just a little bit to get over that 2 million mark, but I don't think it's that important. Um, I don't really think it's going to be... It's definitely not the most damaging alt in the game ever, um, not even by a mile, so even if you had the chance to boost it completely, it's still not going to make it. So, why don't we get into the summary? Um, as you guys can read here, I think he's going to be really fun. Um, of course, I have not had the ability to test him at the moment I'm recording this, but uh, judging from his skill speed his spam ability, um, I think he'll have some nice boost in the game. And, you know, as a veteran player, as something someone who does have all the units and can test them, um, what makes me happy about units is them having a very niche ability to pump out damage. And, and during a level 4 OL buff for him, um, I think he's going to be very, very good for damage. Um... And depending on how make how long you can make that buff active, like that's that's a lot of damage, a lot of damage cap, a lot of damage mitigation, a lot of the ability. If you had Goddess Kiss and, and you either burst during that, he can he's gonna be able to spam out quite a bit of damage. So I'm really excited to test that. Um, very self sufficient, and his stuff's very efficient or very conditional. But min maxing is my favorite thing to do, so it's gonna be really cool. And yes, as I added the end there, his special does look absolutely hilarious. Having an 11x on the special itself during the OL buff, um, I don't know what that's going to look like, but it's going to be great. Um, so why don't we get to the arc? Um, and of course, fantastic artwork. Uh, this is my favorite of all three arcs, for sure. Um, showing all of them on that battle. I don't know who that boss is. I'm not a fan or I have never been a fan of the Tales of series. Just because I've never played it. So maybe you guys can tell me who that boss is. But I don't know. It, it's going to be really cool. Of course the Vesperia is from the Tales of Vesperia. That's that's the game that he's coming from for this collab. Alright. The Arc Trait. Damage dealt to human type enemies plus 20%. Just a straight up flat human type enemy boost. Uh, directly linking into your rate. Love to see it. But magic attack taken. Magic attack damage taken based on number of living allies with non-human type. So any non-human enemies, okay, non-human enemies that are going to, all right, so that that's going to be fair. Um, obviously, four, I assume each ally is going to be minus 5% of that total number. So, you know, everyone has a non-human type, and the, I'm assuming you can stack those with mimicry. So everyone has at least one mimicry that is non-human, you'll get a minus 20% damage against for magic. Um, when taking lethal damage from a special, survive the 1 HP until that attack ends max once. This is kind of cool. So for um, PvE content where you have bosses that have a lot of damage on specials, um, this basically guarantees his survivability to afterwards. Now being at 1 HP after a special, his low health stuff is going to activate, such as Sleeping Lion. Um, it's going to bring his HP back up and give him some boost. It's great. Not only that, 
I don't know if his trait two is going to activate. So if his, if your allies die during, and maybe you get those massive boosts. Um, so it's like 50% strength, intelligence, mind, and defense boost, as well as getting you a skill stock in the middle of a special. That would be pretty. Cool. Um, so of course this is well, this would have to be um, equipped on him, but I see that as potential. Vulnerable skills at marks at max arc level. We make the future. 40 seconds after battle start, give you a special damage plus 20%. Damage cap plus 2,000. So this is very similar to that other skill on the Chronos arc. I honestly am blanking on the name right now. But at 40 seconds or more during the battle and, you know, until incapacitation, you get a damage, special damage boost and cap. So I don't hate that. I, I think it's probably going to be around 5 to 7 SC, but I, I couldn't tell you. Um, Spear Geyser. Give magic attacks and an anti-spirit type effect. They love putting these geysers on LR arcs to make people. I guess if you're a collector for geysers, you kind of have to pull for it, but you really we don't really have any spear type enemies where this is gonna be that needed. Um and assumedly, I guess I don't assumedly, there's things that happen like around collabs where there's time trials and stuff. So I hope, I really hope they're not just pushing the spirit geyser to force people to have to pull for it. So I don't know. But I love having geysers on arc, so if you guys do get this arc, geysers are cool. Um, Earth Mega Drive, and of course this is on an LR arc. Uh, Earth Physical Attack and Special Damage plus 20%. Earth Physical and Special Damage plus 1000. Mega Drives are great, um, especially luxury skills like Earth Mega Drive if you do have the extra SC for it. He is official physical and special attacker. Or, you know, has a competent special, but mostly a physical attacker. So if you have this to give him a little bit more boost, he is dual wield. So it's going to be doubly effective. Um, and of course, for your other Earth units in your in the party, if you do get this arc, absolutely use it. For. Spirit Mimicry, Special Shield, Dual Wield. Actually, holy crap, I didn't even read that the first time. This is the second arc in the entire game with Dual Wield. Outside of Sandworm. Sandworm was released the first month of the goddamn game. And we're finally getting Dual Wield on a separate arc. Wow, holy. It took three years. Plus, over three years to, for us to get dual wield on a second. Now, of course, it's on an LR. But that's crazy. I did. <laughs> that's really funny. Um, but cool. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm just flabbergasted, honestly. All right, let's move on to the Arc Either Reward. Dine Nomos, a sword with no attribute. Fire, ice, earth, thunder damage plus 10%. Special damage plus 20%. So this is essentially for special attackers. I, I don't really get it. Maybe it's like lore based why it is this way. Um, but fire, earth. Again, it's all damage for the 10 percenters for, you know, those base four attributes and then an extra special damage. So, yeah, it's absolutely usable on uh, units that would want to be special of those types or maybe just a special damage in general. I mean, the stats aren't are actually pretty good. Strength, intelligence, both plus 180 uh, defense and mind plus 10. Sure. Being a non-attribute sword, okay. I don't hate it. Uh, uh, we don't have really any swords that boost special damage that much. I know we have a Godforging Axe that boosts it by 50%, but yeah, definitely usable. I wouldn't say it's, you know, cream of the crop, OP, OP, but still pretty good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy my takes on the newest update in, you know, Yuri and the Brave Vesperia LR coming in, into the game. Um... Hope this gave you some ideas as to how you're going to build your units and maybe you how you would like to use him or, or the arc in game um i'll see if i can continue doing these i, I do like enjoying making physical summaries the the page wide summaries that uh are you know people can just read at their own at their leisure i guess i should say um but i thought those kind of be kind of fun to make a video so i'll see if it's if you guys do like this let me know um and i'll see if i can try to do more of them all right guys see you in the next one